we need to talk about overheating. This, I don't know why this has become such a popular trend, but I thought it was worth taking the time to make a video specifically calling it out and the frustrations I've had with these cameras and devices overheating for no good reason <laughs> in my mind. I think the first biggest argument people will say is, well, they, they need to be sealed up, the cameras, the devices. Like I recently talked about the Atomos Shinobi 2 and the issues I had with it overheating. And someone left a comment saying the first Shinobi was like so exposed, they were worried about taking out in the rain or in any kind of moist environment. Maybe they're filming by the ocean or I, I don't know what specifically they had in mind, but the, the fans, the ventilation, exposing the internal parts to the external elements which fair enough, I, I can sort of give a little grace to that aspect of if you're filming in harsher conditions, I think we should have equipment custom tailored to that, more enclosed, weather sealed, whatever, and you can buy that specifically. I think that's a, certainly a market that exists and if companies, camera manufacturers, whoever wants to cater to that, they absolutely should. Seal up the cameras, seal up the monitors, whatever it takes and cater to those people who want that. For the general use case, people shooting short films, music videos, documentaries, weddings, TikTok videos, YouTube videos, general purpose. I think we have to start drawing the line and like saying we don't we don't want so many compromised devices. I don't know if the, the issue stems from engineering where they think it's it's not a concern, not a problem. If it comes from marketing where they say, hey, we need these features, make it work. And the engineers are sitting there going, well, gosh, the only way to do that is to close this thing up and have it cook itself. But I'm sick of it. This started in my mind with the Canon R5 and it's overheating, even though at the time and even since then, I think everyone's kind of said, well, it's not really like overheating. We just had to kind of like cripple the camera a little bit because it was like too good and it was gonna compete with the cinema line. So yeah, Canon R5, they kind of said, yeah, it overheats, but, but like it really didn't. And we have Sony who is notorious at this point for putting out cameras that can record for like 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and then they overheat and you gotta take it all apart. You gotta pop the battery out. You gotta take the lens off and people are doing everything they can to keep these things from cooking themselves. Because in the Sony case, I think it is actually overheating. They're just built in a way, and I don't know why they're doing this, to be super compromised. And that's the only thing I can describe it as. And maybe it is to protect the cinema, the FX line, which they call, so there's the alpha cameras, like, I don't know what the Sony cameras, the, the, the more premium, whatever, uh, the cinema line that Sony has. It's very frustrating to buy something that you need to work and then it cooks itself to the point where it doesn't work. Uh, GoPros have also been notorious for overheating. I just had issues with the DJI Osmo, the, uh, the uh, Osmo Pocket 3. That was overheating on me. And in scenarios where like, I'm outside. You know, it's not a super hot day. Yes, the sun is out. Uh, iPhones and phones in general are constantly overheating to the point where you can't use it. It needs to cool itself down. And granted, there's a level of, I don't expect these things to work if I throw them in the oven, if I'm letting it bake at 120 degrees in the full sun. There, yes, there is a point of reasonable exposure to the heat, to the elements. But there's also the flip side where, I don't know if, if you all remember, but Apple used to make MacBook Pros that were com that got comically hot as far as like laptops go. So a laptop could be on your lap. And I think people actually got burned in some cases from how hot these things were, were getting. And this was way back, gosh, a long time ago. I haven't noticed the issue as much recently with Apple and their uh, laptops, but it certainly is common now where we have so many cameras, devices, overheating. Even recently, Lumix with the G9 Mark II, they took the fans away, the, the venting system. The, this one really grinds my gears. The Lumix G9 Mark II is the exact same body shape and style as the full frame Lumix S5 Mark II. The only difference is that the Lumix S5 Mark II has exhaust ports near the viewfinder. They're small, they're not even, and this is a full frame camera processing a lot of data. 
there's a, there's exhaust ports, small ones. And I've never had the S5 Mark II overheat on me. The G9 Mark II, the micro, the smaller sensor version, they took those exhaust ports away for weather sealing or, or because it's a photography camera, whatever the excuse is. And it, it's plagued with overheating. It really, really makes me frustrated because now you're kind of rolling the dice with any purchase you make, whether it's the Atomo Shinobi 2, a Sony camera, a Canon camera, a Lumix camera now even, you're never quite sure if this thing is going to work the way you need it to consistently. And that is a huge, huge issue that I don't think a lot of people talk about enough in terms of what that means for when you're actually shooting and using the thing. In the back of your mind, if you have a camera that overheats, in the back of your mind, you're always thinking, how do I manage the thermals on this device to where I can keep using it for as long as I need to? And if you're thinking about that, you're not thinking creatively, you're not making sure that your other technical things are, are right, meaning your focus, your white balance, your exposure, all the other, you know, your set dressing, all the other components that go into production. I personally don't wanna to have to think about battery life, thermal management, or memory card space ever on a shoot because it's just not something I won't even have to consider. I want a memory card that's big enough that it basically I know it's gonna last for as long as I need it to sort of not infinitely, but indefinitely, right? It's got more space than I'll, I'll need for that day. I need a battery or a power system that's going to last long enough so where I don't have to really think about like, oh, do I have enough batteries in my pockets? Have I charged enough? Do I not have enough ready to go? That shall be the day prior. You get the battery charged to the point where you have enough to last you through the shoot so you don't have to think about it. And I don't wanna to have to worry about keeping my camera cool. Oh, do I need to clip the fan to it? Well, now I need power for that fan or, okay, well maybe I won't have the fan at the start of the shoot. And then once the camera starts telling me that it's getting warm, then I'll clip the fan on. Okay, I'll, I'll strategically plan breaks in my production to pause, to not film. I'll switch cameras. I'll do whatever hoops you're jumping through. Trust me, it's not worth it. I think, and this is maybe a hot take, pun intended, if you, you have a device that overheats, sell it, return it, do not buy it. I think that the excuse, and I'm sure there'll be people in the comments saying, what do you expect for a $1,000 camera? What do you expect for a $2,000 camera? What do you expect for a $3,000 camera? What do you expect? If you want the professional stuff, buy the professional stuff. If you want a video camera, buy it. Like, they show up every time and they say the same thing. But yet, when you go look at the product pages, when you look at the marketing, they tout the video features. They highlight how great these devices are, but they will not tell you the, the overheating limitations. They won't say, oh, this the Shinobi 2, it's gonna overheat on you, given X, Y, and Z. They're not gonna tell you that. It's gonna be hidden, it's gonna be buried. They're not even gonna mention it. They're gonna say it's brighter, it's slimmer, it has more ports, it has, you know, whatever, whatever the marketing stuff is they tell you about. Oh, now it shoots 6K, now it shoots 8K, now it does X, Y, and Z, more stabilization, more dynamic range. They love telling you all the features. What they hate telling you is the limitations. And it's really unfortunate that you have to go to YouTube or you have to go read a review, watch someone's video where we're literally just testing how long the thing can stay on just to find out and say, yeah, actually this thing can stay on for like 20 minutes or this can stay on for 40 minutes in these conditions. Well, is that Celsius or is that Fahrenheit? Is that outside, inside, in direct sun, in the shade? Well, what if you're in, in 6K mode? What if you're in 3K mode? What if you're shooting 1080? What if you're shooting 60 frames versus 24 frames? <laughs> How about we just have computers, phones, cameras, monitors that have proper thermal management built in to the point where we don't have to worry about it. And again, this is for general public use, general consumer, not the, you know, the, they make products, right? That are designed with like to, uh, uh, that are more like, like bulletproof, like military grade, or they'll have stuff that's specifically designed um, to be extra light or that will be, you know, intentionally weather sealed, right? Those carve those market, those things out. And then for general public, general use, you have your thing that kind of one size fits all. This is the, the thing you want with these features. And trust us, it's going to run and it's gonna stay on. You would not buy a car that was overheating on, on you after, I don't know, a 10 mile trip, after a, a 50 mile trip. 
I mean, if your car is overheating, there's something wrong with it. <laughs> You're in some extreme, extreme scenario, and there's something wrong with the vehicle itself. Car, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't accept it because you'd say, I need the car to function. I need it to get me from A to B, and I don't have to be worried about how hot, how hot it's getting. Now, there is a gauge that'll tell you how hot the engine is, but if it's overheating, it's a problem, not a feature. It wasn't built that way to do that. Yet these cameras devices are built with poor thermal management in mind for what? So you go buy the more expensive one. Oh, so what? Because like they can make just another alternate version that now has the fan. Why not just make it good to begin with? And I'm sure I know they're going to show up in the comments, all the reasons why we can't get, but we can get what we want. There are devices that don't overheat the Lumix S5 Mark II. I've, I, I film in Phoenix, Arizona. It's very hot here, especially in the summer. Right now it's a little bit cooler, thankfully. I haven't had an issue with, again, reasonable you know, treatment. I'm not stress testing it. I'm not leaving it in my car where it gets upwards of 120 degrees in the full sun and expecting it to perform. I'm saying in you know comfortable human environment where I want to film, where you want to film, just Generally, like if I'm comfortable, my camera should be comfortable too. And yet it's become more and more common that it's not, that we have to find the workarounds, the tricks. I'm done with that. I don't want to deal with that. I want it to work all the time because the moment it overheats and it stops functioning, it doesn't matter what the resolution is. It doesn't matter the dynamic range. It doesn't matter the frame rate. It doesn't matter the stabilization. All of that is functionally zero because the device does not work if it's overheating. So now I'm stuck, I'm left with a brick, the same value. I could hand you a brick and it'd be the exact same as an over, overheat of a cooked camera. They do the same thing. They both do nothing. Gee, thanks. And I don't want to have to think about bringing another backup camera body or think about taking breaks. I want to be efficient. I want to be productive. And I want to get value out of the devices that I'm spending my value on. I'm paying for these things to work. Imagine watching Netflix and halfway through the movie, your TV just turns off because it got too hot. Oh, well, that's different. No, it's not different. It's it's electronics. <laughs> They ensure that it's, it's got a screen, it's got all the similar components and they, they engineer it in such a way that it does not overheat. You can watch Netflix all day, every day and your TV shouldn't overheat. It just shouldn't be a thing. It's not an option. It makes it de defective. It's like a lemon if it has that type of problem. But for whatever reason in production, when it comes to video, it's, it's accepted like it's normal, like, oh, what, what more would you want it to work? That's what I want it. So yeah, it's, it's, a it's a touchy subject for me because I see more and more of it happening. And it's super frustrating to spend a thousand dollars or whatever it might be on a device, a couple hundred bucks, a couple thousand dollars in some cases, and still have something that is such a technical marvel. And yet it still it can't work reliably 100% of the time. And it nags at the back of your mind throughout the entire production thinking, when am I gonna hit the limit? When am I gonna hit the wall? When am I gonna have to pivot and make an adjustment? And that's just not how anyone wants. I don't wanna work that way. And I don't think you should wanna work that way either.